Welcome back to the U.S. Carb Clinic. I am the real Dr. Who, live on Facebook and YouTube. Of course, we're here to answer your questions that you may have about carburation, conversions, or anything like that. But we also have a few other things to show you along the way. Uh, before we get into debunk the junk, I wanted to show you a Bernoulli bag. I'm popping this one out on the producer. You don't even know about this. Look at this bag. It's like eight feet long. All right, it is a plastic bag. You see, look, nothing up my sleeve. All right, now, trusty assistant, Sean, is gonna come and blow this bag up for us. All right, Sean, how many breaths will it take? You ready? All right, all right, all right. Let's see what you got. Oh, look at that. Huh? Pretty good. You got a whole foot of air. <coughs> Biohazard. All right. Now, watch the dock. We don't work harder, we work smarter. You put your Bernoulli bag on the table, you get down here, and you do a little trick. I hate to show you, but I will. And then you go. Look at that! Huh? <laughs> Two breaths. Two breaths. And yes, please don't write in. Oh, you're full of hot air. That's why. It wouldn't be funny because I said it first. But that's a Bernoulli bag. How's that work? Well, when you hold that end open like that, and you blow from here. Negative pressure is created here, and the atmosphere actually helps blow it up. So you get the help of the atmosphere. And I always like to talk about Bernoulli because it's how our systems work, how carburetors work, how alternative fuel works. And so it's good to understand Bernoulli. Bernoulli's everywhere. Actually, I had a video. Accidentally uh, dropped a golf, not a golf, a not even a tennis ball. It was a, a ping pong ball on a dehumidifier, and it started doing the Bernoulli thing. I was like, well, that was pretty cool. But uh, anyway, we're going to debunk the junk. And what were we debunking this week? You never picked anything. Oh, boy. We ain't got no junk to debunk. I'm still upset about those so-called 20-pound cylinders that really have 15 pounds in them. Hey, yeah. You want to grab that cylinder? Let me show you that cylinder real quick. Uh, and again, Type your questions in. We're live, so we'll answer them right away if, if we can. If not, we'll make something up. But uh, yeah, wanted to give you a visual of when you buy a 20-pound cylinder, <laughs> so-called 20-pound cylinder of propane. This is how much, well, I can hold it up there. Well, it looks better from over here. Look there. So here's here's half the cylinder right here. And if you look, that, that's, that's the weld mark. So. A lot of people don't know this. This is actually two flat discs. I wish I had one. Well, I have one at home to bring in, but we shot it all up with a gun, so it's got holes all in it. But these actually start out as two flat, like pancake flat plates, and they press them into a press and make two U's, and then they weld the two U's together. And so here's the dead center of the tank, all right? So you see it's like an inch above dead center. So that's how much liquid is actually in that tank when in reality, 20 pounds would be up here. So when we think we're buying a 20 pound cylinder worth of fuel, we're actually getting 15 pounds and the tank is almost at half gone anyway. So anyway, still irked about that. So I'll get off my high horse and get back on my stool. All right, so today's show is about um, converting, not converting, we added a snorkel to a Yamaha pressure washer, a PW, well, I don't want to give it all away, it's kind of a, uh, it was an outdoor thing we did the other day, and uh, I'm glad it was, because today we, we got flooded again, hope they, hope we don't get washed away again, but, but are we, we ready for that clip? All right, so hope you enjoy, and again, during the clip, you can still write in questions about, um, you know, motor snorkels, or carburation, or anything you have going, so. Let's run the clip. 
Welcome to the Dr. Hugh outdoor segment today and today we're doing a Yamaha pressure washer. It is a Yamaha PW3028 is the model number if you'll notice on the side but we can determine that also by the fact that most likely it's a 30 as in 3000 PSI and 2.8 gallons per minute so 30 28. So it's been on gasoline for 33.4 hours. We're going to put a snorkel on it so that we can have it start and run better than it has been. We're going to go ahead and run it now and hopefully we can tell the difference when we run our propane to see uh, the quality change in the, in the uh, adding of the snorkel. So we're going to fire this thing up. All right, we're ready to start. So we've got to have our trigger squeezed, have our choke on for starting. Switch on, switches on, and then let's hope it starts. There we go. We came inside after running the unit outside on gasoline and ran it empty. So my assistant Sean and I are gonna show you how, oh, say hi Sean. Hi Sean. Hi. <laughs> Uh, how easy it is to add the snorkel to this pressure washer. As a matter of fact, we're gonna go for a world record, show you how quick an installation is. So here's the motor snorkel we're gonna put on this Yamaha pressure washer. You can see it's custom designed for it. And we'll be giving that to Sean to, uh, to do. And here's the, the tools required for installation. And that is all to get the snorkel onto the carburetor. On your mark, get set, go. Well, that's it. Sean's got the snorkel on three minutes. All we got left now is mount the engine regulator and get the hose on it to hook to the cylinder. It'll take a few more minutes. All right, we're outside obviously and uh, everything's mounted and you see we even uh, we have a proprietary bracket mounting system that there's no holes drilled in the frame so it makes a real sturdy mount for the, for the gas line and uh, we just happen to put a three and a half on here of course you can go six twelve feet but also we have instructions on how you can relocate this plate and mount the cylinder on the pressure washer so you don't have to move it around if that's uh, an issue. Some people like to have a 100 pound cylinder which holds 24 gallons and then go and go and go. They figure they're gonna move the machine anyway. You just move the, uh, the tank. And of course we have extension hoses that can go, they're 12 foot sections. You could go for 48 feet if you wanted. So, uh, so now it's, we've not started it yet. That's a truism. We're gonna get ready to prime it. And you're gonna see it fire at the same time we do. So uh, Sean just turned the tank on. Set the load block about where we think it goes. We'll give it a little prime. And then Sean's gonna pull the trigger. They got the 34.50. Kept leaning it out, got the 34.40. Backed it up just a bit, the 50 locked it in. 
and it was tacking at 3480. So you see how far out it was. It didn't need to be that way. We want it lean and clean. This thing used to, I wish we'd have recorded that on gasoline. It would run and it would just keep sputtering at idle. It, it kind of surprised you. You'd be standing next to it all of a sudden, it'd jump up on you, you know? That's impressive. I've, this is my personal machine. I've had this for two years. And it always like kicks for a second. But this is sweet. And that's what propane's all about. It's just as smooth and it's got great acceleration. I mean, that's like instant response. It wasn't doing that before. So there you go. There's the Yamaha PW 3028 running on the motor snorkel system on propane purring like a kitten. And like I said, I'm really proud of that because after a couple of years of dealing with that thing ticking up every few minutes, uh, that's really sweet. You got me now? All right. Sorry about that. Hey, welcome back. <laughs> we enjoyed shooting that the other day. And um, it is true that uh, we brought the thing outside, hooked up the tank, primed it, pulled it a couple times, and fired right up. And you can see full power, just purring like a kitten, as I say. But then again, we recently got a kitten, and I'm about tired of purring, so i got to come up with a new term. Like, uh, it ran like a snorkel. <laughs> How's that? All right. Well, um, of course, we can do any pressure washer. We can do as long as it's a four cycle gasoline. Uh, and again, coming up on the show, we'll also be having a uh, Husqvarna weed eater and a John Deere um, ZTR. I think it's a 425 uh, with a two barrel carburetor. And we'll be doing the dual 20 pound cylinders for that one as well. So uh, I guess we're now on to the customer mail for today and I have yet to see it so they tell me it won't be too bad so let's see what it is yes we we offer the snorkels as an upgrade to an existing kit uh, some people buy the adapter kit realize they don't want to cut the frame and so um, Absolutely. Just uh, let them know what engine and generator it is or pressure washer or whatever machine it is and they'll get you a matching snorkel. And, and ask about the special. There's a little special when you do that. We have a little upgrade special. So absolutely. All right. So in the United States they're made in high quality materials and being a new product it was necessary from the beginning to offer lifetime warranty so that's what we've been doing up until this point so uh, you know those things are always subject to change but this time as of this date july 27th 2017 if you order a motor snorkel kit the snorkel will have a lifetime guarantee uh, the engine regulator currently has a one-year warranty which is extendable you can ask about that as well all right boy those are easy i like that all right wow we have all kinds of accessories we starting from if it's an electric start engine we have automatic start stop control modules we also have wireless remote start stop control mo modules that you can like in a camper, you can start your generator outside, turn it off. Uh, if it gets dark out and you don't want to go, off, go out and turn it off, afraid of bears or, or other things that may be out there. And we have all the hookup hose accessories, um, brass fittings. We have a lot of the good brass fittings that, and at a good price too, that some hardware stores, some local big box stores don't have 
and they want to sell you steel. And I never was a fan of mixing steel with brass or aluminum with steel and brass because of electrolysis, but uh, we try to stick with brass all the way. So we usually have any fitting you could want. Uh, all right, does that answer that? All right, got another one. What is it? No, that's it. That was all of them. Okay, cool. Man, I got off easy on that one. Uh, let's see. So we're ready for the outro. We're ready for outro. Nobody had a question. Either we answered them all or nobody's out there. What was that picture? You did the tractor? Oh, yeah. Are you going to show that again? Is that what you're doing? What do you have it up there for? Are oh, you just playing? You should. You could show. Uh, we'll do the Bernoulli dehumidifier next time. Oh, okay. Before we go, we'll show you the accidental. Bernoulli's everywhere. There, as I mentioned in one episode, there was a bridge up up Washington State that that the wind took out because of Bernoulli's principle. Uh, if you're Venetian blinds, you have the window open, they start to shutter like this. That's Bernoulli. It's causing lift and many things go into it, but it flexes back and then Bernoulli lifts it again. Negative pressure. Well, uh, I happened to drop a ping pong ball on top of a, my dehumidifier in my garage the other day and I thought, hey, I got nothing better to do. Let's get a video of it. Uh, that's not the one I have. It's not the one you have. Oh, great. Had the low and brow clock in the background and everything. That was pretty cool. Like little pet huh? Little, like I've done it. Haven't I done the trucks? Things. I've done the trucks on here before. No? Oh, I got to open with that. No, that's that's an opener. I like to open. I'll open with the trucks. Hey, no, I didn't. Yeah, these are my Bernoulli trucks. If you haven't seen them, they're, uh, they're made in the 50s and 60s. They are really cool. We'll demonstrate that next time on the show. Remind me. All right, well. Again, our CSRs are standing by. If you do have a question, feel free to email them, chat with them. They're online to chat. Uh, you send an email. We'll get back with you really quick. Uh, Facebook response. We get, a, we get a high rating for Facebook response. We're right at, what, 11 minutes average, something like that. So that's pretty good. So um, thanks again for, for watching episode number 12. 12. We got two 11s in there, don't we? I've seen, I seen two 11s in there. So is this like a hotel? You know, there is no 13th floor. So this is really episode 13 probably, but, which I don't care. I'm not superstitious. But anyway, uh, thanks again for joining us. Uh, phone number is right. There. Man, you took all the fun out of it. There's the phone number. And there's the time and when you can reach us. So, again, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the episode. And, uh, and uh, this is Dr. Hughes saying have a great day.